chest wall reconstruction, principles, material, and techniques, thoracic master class. Chest wall resection and reconstruction may follow congenital anomalies of the chest wall, chest wall trauma, chest wall tumors. The goals of a successful chest wall reconstruction are restore the chest wall rigidity, preserve pulmonary mechanics, protect the intrathoracic organs, minimize the thoracic deformity. Chest wall reconstruction is required for defects more than 5 cm or including more than 4 ribs to prevent lung herniation and respiratory compromise from paradoxical motion of the chest wall and trilateral defects, defects lower than the fourth rib posteriorly, with the tip of the scapula at risk to entrapment, it is not required in apicoposterior defects, even 10 cm in size, because of the support provided by the scapula and shoulder girdle. The optimal approach to reconstruction is determined by the size of the defect, its location, the depth of the defect, viability of the surrounding tissues, prior operative procedures, new plastic pathology it is mandatory to obtain oncologic margin is not compromised, and this could be result in large full thickness defects. Chest wall reconstruction requires skeletal coverage, and this can be achieved by synthetic, biological, or composite meshes, and can be used with or without titanium plate to restore thoracic cage rigidity. Allografts can be used to reconstruct the sternum soft tissue coverage, and this can be achieved by direct suture, skin grafts, local advancement, pedicled, or free flaps. Meshes, synthetic, biological, and titanium, the ideal meshes provide rigidity to abolish paradoxical movement, inertness to align growth of fibrous tissue, and decreases the likelihood of infection, malleability to fashion to the appropriate shape at the time of operation, radiolucency to create an anatomical reference for inspection, and planning further radiotherapy in neoplastic pathology. Different types of meshes are available each has its pros and cons, polypropylene and polyesters these are usually doubled over and sutured to adjacent ribs and fascia to cover the immediate surface of the chest wall defect. They are liable to infection at a rate of 10 and up to 25%. In this respect the mesh should be taken out, bovine mesh, they have the same tensile strength and elasticity as those synthetic ones but some proper physiologic properties of resistance to infection and contamination, however they cannot provide enough rigidity for chest wall stability, even if they were tightly stretched, titanium mesh present with more strength than the synthetic ones, maintaining the same plasticity and adaptability on the chest wall defect however, they are very expensive, vicryl mesh, they are inert non-antigenic, biocompatible, and slowly absorbable material, however, they are expensive. Composite implants, for anterior, sternal, or lower posterior defects meshes could be insufficient, even if well sutured, and stretched as a drum, to protect the intrathoracic organs. This problem should be resolved with the use of composite implants techniques, and this can be achieved by incorporating other materials such as, methyl methacrylate, Gore-Tex, and titanium plates. Different composite implant materials has been proposed, however each of which has its pros and cons, methyl methacrylates, is used sandwiched between two layers of the mesh to strengthen the rigidity of the reconstruction it has been the best choice to reconstruct the sternum, ribs, and chest wall, however it's not free of complications that includes, pain, fractures, infection, and should be covered by viable soft tissue, Gore-Tex, is watertight, and causes minimal foreign body reaction, however it is flexible and allowing it to conform to the chest wall, most commonly 2 mm thick meshes stretched over the chest wall defect using heavy permanent sutures, in all cases viable soft tissue cover is needed, titanium plates it has a higher resistance to corrosion, low specific weight, a remarkable resistance to traction, it is diamagnetic, and compatible with MRI, but above all is biologically in it, and highly biocompatible, however, these plates are expensive. Both human and porcine bioprosthetic materials have been developed over the past decade in response to the need for complex chest wall reconstruction in infected irradiated and reoperative fields, cryopreserved allografts and homographts, recovered from cadaveric donors, and stored at minus 80 degrees, are being more commonly used for restore structural integrity in large chest wall defects, sternal allograft transplantation represents an ideal example of allograft for anterior chest wall reconstruction following sternectomy for tumors or infective processes.
The major advantage is that they are able to incorporate into native tissue with revascularization and cellular repopulation, making them more resistant to infection and useful in contaminated fields. Regardless of the technique used to establish skeletal stability, full tissue coverage of the prosthesis is mandatory, using direct suture, skin grafts, local advancement flaps, pedicled myocutaneous flaps or free flaps. In this case, the plastic surgeon often plays a leading role in extensive chest wall defects reconstruction. Among the several muscles used, the latissimus dorsi is considered the workhorse in chest wall reconstruction. As this flap enables coverage of the entire ipsilateral chest wall, it is based off the thoracodorsal artery from subscapular artery, which originates at the axillary artery, but it can survive off of retrograde flow from the serratus branch into the thoracodorsal artery. The choice of blood supply is determined by the arc of rotation required to cover the given defect. It could be used to cover anterolateral and posterior wall defects, or can be passed after resection of a portion of second or third rib to avoid vascular compression, between the ribs to fill a significant amount of intrathoracic space. Persistent seroma is the most common complication of this technique, described in up to 79% of cases. In addition it is possible a temporary functional disability with poor arm abduction between 90 degrees and 180 degrees, with reduction in arm strength, commonly resolved in the first year. The pectoralis major is taken into account as the principal flap for sternal and anterosuperior chest wall defect coverage. Its blood supply is duplex, the dominant comes from the thoracocromial pedicle, the other from sixth intercostal perforating branches arising from mammary artery. If bilateral pectoralis flaps are mobilized to cover the sternum, and a future sternal resection is required, the flaps can be usually be preserved and ray, applied to the sternum, the rectus abdominis flap. Feeded by deep superior or inferior epigastric systems, affords unparalleled versatility of skin island design, vertically, VRAM, transverse, tram, oriented skin pedicle, which has enabled wide application of this flap for coverage of anterior or anterolateral defects. VRAM skin islands have a more robust blood supply than tram islands due to the increased number of perforators. VRAM flaps are well suited for covering large longitudinal chest wall defects, such as after total sternectomy. Tram flaps can cover defects up to 40 cm in size and are most often proposed to supply soft tissue coverage of the anterolateral thoracic cage. Free muscle flaps may be indicated if local muscle group have been resected, previously injured or irradiated. This technique can play an important role in chest wall reconstruction and was possible with the evolution of microsurgical techniques, on the back, latissimus dorsi, parascapula, a fasciocutaneous or myocutaneous flaps, on the thigh, tensor fasciolati and tram are some of free flaps usually used. Despite the recent advances in titanium prosthetic bar design, actuated to repair men at chest wall defect configurations, the prosthesis are far from ideal yet, there were good results using bar absorbable materials for chest wall repair. Mainly important in the growing pediatric patients, a new recent development could be a computed tomography with reconstructed three-dimensional images, that could guide the production, via 3D printing technology, accurate resin, polymer, metal and degradable biomaterial prosthesis, a combination of materials can be used, some biodegradable, others to make rigid the structure and more exciting evolution should be a 3D printing by a scaffold. That allows the growth and colonization by patients' own cells into biodegradable materials, like collagen coated polydeoxinone and polycaprolactone, have been recently investigated. A polydeoxinone mesh demineralized bone and bone marrow stromal cells has been successfully used in an animal model to replace ribs and reconstruct a relatively small chest wall defect. Please subscribe to our channel if you liked the content. Thank you.